Welcome to ePartshala, myself Richa, working as an assistant professor in the Department of Political Science in MCM DAV College, Chandigarh. Today I will discuss about the topic authoritarian state. First of all, we should know the meaning of state. The state has four elements, population, fixed territory, government and sovereignty. And all the four elements are very much essential. When we discuss about the sovereignty, sovereignty consists of two elements which we considered as the most important. Uh, one is the internal sovereignty and second one is the internal sovereign, external sovereignty. Internal sovereignty deals with the people living in, inside the state and the people has to follow the rules and regulations and if you do not follow them then the, the government can punish the person. And external sovereignty means the people are not under the foundation of any international organizations and international association. Whatever the state wants to do it is become the sweet will of that particular state. So, democracy is a form of government where it is for the people, by the people and to the people. And when we are talking about authoritarian state, authoritarian state means that where the consent of the people do not take part, where the people do not have a free in, in speak and where the elections were held but the state is under the authoritarian rule. The objectives are to understand the nature of an authoritarian state, to be familiar with the limitations placed on the citizens in an authoritarian state, to understand how this state keeps control on its citizens, and to know the impotence in the path of democracy. Authoritarian states are characterized by limited or no political pluralism and an appeal to the emotions. For example, an evil has to be combated, danger to the unity of the country, insurgency, etc. Without elections, power is vague and indefinite and often keeps shifting according to exigency of the situation. In the traditional authoritarian regime, power control maintained through the loyalty factor. In some countries, we have bureaucratic military authoritarian regime, where the bureaucracy rationalizes their control. The military authoritarian regimes are controlled by the army. In Africa, the racial democracy encourages certain racial, ethnic group to enjoy full rights keeping the other away from the basic rights and even denying them the basic rights. In Latin America, the corporate authoritarian regimes, the state used corporate institutions to either co-opt or demobilize influential and powerful pressure groups. The personality authoritarian regime, as in Pakistan under General Zair ul Haq, are characterized by control through coercion or through the patronage network. Ruler, institutions, etc. are bent at the whim of the ruler. The same is found in Africa in great variety. The populist authoritarian regime is led by a leader who appeals to any low-key group that has long been denied power and dignity. Such groups are mobilized, used and firmly entrenched in power knowing that these privileges would continue till the leader who led them, guided them, is firmly in power. We have the example of Argentina and Egypt. The potential challenges are either eliminated or repressed. Power is an authoritarian state, is centralized. New issues are raised, lies can be connoted to remain in power. The leader is usually strong, charismatic and manipulative akin to the status of a demigod. Bureaucracy, armed forces, either given more power and also kept in good on humor. Opposition is there for the name's sake or doesn't exist at all. A secret police usually stifles any kind of opposition and keeps a check on the society. As opposed to individualism or democracy, Authoritarianism is characterized by an indefinite political tenure of the regime. The ruler stays in power or long as he can maintain their control. Authoritarian states in Asia. Asia is conundrum of different forms of government with countries as similar and as dissimilar as India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Bhutan, China, Sri Lanka, Burma. Asia is indeed a laboratory where experiments is in myriad forms of government are occurring every decade. 
Nepal and Pakistan have been struggling to make a democratic transition away from their authoritarian past. A long-time democracy, India is struggling to cope with the vast social and political transformation wrought by 50 years of modernization. Asia has to be studied because a big chunk of the population resides here and because of delinking colonialism, a new world of affairs emerged. Rising nationalism was another element that led to a curious mixture of an urge for development but also permitted by a spirit of clinging to the old along with it the rising frustration of the people led to a growing impatience which has resulting in leaders not elected for the people coming forward to take charge of affairs. Authoritarian state thus become a reality in Asia although the revolution for national independence in Asia has been largely won the more deep-rooted revolution of rising expectations has just begun. Already it is a threatening to become the revolution of rising frustrations. Pakistan, India's immediate neighbor, has periodic phase of authoritarian rule. Pakistan lost its top leader very early, who were also the founder of the country. Muhammad Ali Jinnah, in September 1948, Liaquat Ali Khan, the first Prime Minister of Pakistan, who was assassinated in October 1951. In Pakistan, there is a disguised military rule. The bureaucracy and the military journal took over the reins of the government. Pakistan got its first constitution in 1956, and by then it goes to India's credit that the latter had twice gone to the poll. The then president, Sikandar Mirza, suspended the 1956 constitution while cancelling the elections which were scheduled for January 1959. He did all this with the support of the army. He also imposed martial law, but Sikandar Mirza was sent to exile within 20 days and General Muhammad Ayub Khan bestowed control of Pakistan. 14 years there was a rapid economic growth titled horribly in the favor of rich. He called functional inequality a great incentive, but the new urban classes were not happy with this argument. Ayub Khan was deposed by the ruling military in 1969 after protests continued for a long time. Elections were promised by the army. The elections were held on 7th December 1970, in which the Awami League won, which has centered in East Pakistan. The government of Yahya Khan set aside the people verdict in the 1970 elections on March 1, 1975. Zulifikar Ali Bhutto, who Pakistan People's Party had secured the second position, came to power with the support of military. After a rule of six years that were marked by the violence, bribery, military intervened in July 1977 and the martial law was imposed. The election held in March 1977 in which Bhutto emerged victorious, were not accepted by the people as they later felt that the election were rigged. General Zayal Ullah Haq seized power in July 1977 and banned political parties and muzzled the press. Zayal Ullah Haq pelted the PPP and the Pakistan National Alliance against each other and widened his area of maneuvering. He kept promising elections while simultaneously extending his control over the economic, political and social sphere. The Supreme Court gave its verdict in Zai's favor and thus legalized intervention of the military. Elections were indefinitely cancelled for Zia, got the stamp of the court. He took over the right to appoint and replace judges, struck down the constitutional conventions of the provisions of judicial review and censored the press. Favors over distributed and the biradari took place in the interest of group. Banazar Bhutto, daughter of slain Zulfikar Ali Bhutto, started the process of restoration of democracy. But the elections in March 1985 gave Zia a clear verdict. The Zia regime masterly social engineering had altered the face of Pakistan political spectrum. Not only had the PPP population been appointed by the candidates, preferring to feather their nest by supporting the military regime, 
but many of its members had participated in the elections in the violation of party discipline. Zia made the parliament important by pushing many amendments to the prime minister and declared Pakistan to be an Islamic society. Zia's death in a plane crash led to President Ghulam Isaq Khan at the helm of affairs. Banazir Bhutto won the elections of November 1988 but were dismissed on August 6, 1990. Elections were again held on October 24, 1990, and Islamic Jamhuri Itihad were led by Nawaz Sharif as the Prime Minister. Nawaz Sharif government was dismissed in April 1993 for President. Ghulam Ish Khan wanted to ensure his own success in the next presidential election scheduled for 1993, and Nawaz Sharif was trying to break from being a depending protege of the military. The court restored Sharif to be the power, but the tussle continued. Elections were held in October 1993, and Banazir Bhutto won by a slim majority. Her tenure was marked by corruption and collapse of the physical system. In February 1997 elections, Nawaz Sharif emerged victorious. He tried to muzzle the press, the public, the judiciary, and even the military. Taking the deteriorating law and order in mind, the armed forces put Sharif under house arrest on October 12, 1999. Journal Pervez Musharraf assumed charge of martial law was imposed, citing it as another path of democracy. He banned political rallies in March 2000. He issued oath of judges, order number 2000, under which judges has to take a fresh oath of office in which they would swear allegiance to the military. Musharraf appointed himself as president on June 20, 2001. Rocked by many controversies, Musharraf resigned in 2007. The suspension of Chief Justice Muhammad Chaudhary was met with protest. He quits politics in 2008, but returned from his self-imposed exile in London to Pakistan to contest presidency, but was put under house arrest. In a nutshell, we can say that the choices of Pakistan were not between democracy and authoritarian, but between more or less authoritarianism. Nepal has a monarchical form of government when King Mahindra ascended the throne. In 1955, he bypassed the Council of Ministers and recognized the bureaucracy to his advantage. The constitution framed was pro-monarchy elections were held in February 1959. But the king dismissed the first popularity elected president, B.P. Korala, in 1960. He officially banned political opposition. King Mahindra's death in 1972 led to his son, King Varendra, organize the Back to the Village national campaign, control the local parties. People protested but voted for the king panchayat system over multi-party system in 1980. The failure of political parties can be explanation for this. The patronage system works to the king's favor. The Jan Andolan of 1990 challenged the monarch and Nepal become a constitutional monarchy. The army remained faithful to the king, but the king gave many concessions like bicameral legislative, universal adult suffrage, etc. In Burma, the authoritarian state can be seen in practice. The Burmese armed forces has marginalized political opposition and rewritten the constitution. It is exploiting the resources to distribute the assets in favor of its officers. The parliament is controlled by the military. While health and education are in a bad state, military officers are living in luxury. The authoritarian streak is only being upgraded by elections. The principal opposition leader, Sen Suu Kyi, was placed under house arrest for 20 years. China is another state that qualifies to be authoritarian state. There is no freedom of thought and action and the people political activists are jailed, purged, tortured and killed. The Tiananmen Square massacre in 1989 is one example where decent is just not tolerated. There is a choice between candidates but not between parties. Citizens only vote at the lower level of government and not for the higher level of government. The elite in the party, which is control, is not answerable to the people and rule arbitrarily. There is no private property and no liberties for the people. 
the judiciary is also under the control of the party. Rule of law doesn't figure in the scheme of Communist Party. The federal system and multi-party system do not suit China only party, the Communist Party of China. The authoritarian state has a deliberate effort to increase economic growth and do not stress economic and social rights. The party does not lend itself to scrutiny by the public or by any other opposition party. The third world offers a lot of scope for the emergence of authoritarian regime. Perhaps the chief characteristics of the third world were power system of the relative lack of power anywhere in the system. In all these countries, press freedom is rare. The legislature are a rubber stamp and there are few checks on the executives. The leaders try to accumulate more authority. This leads to the new institution. Turkmenistan became an independent country in 1991 after the breakup of USSR. With no history of multi-party system, free process of political pluralism, the country has no practical experience in democracy. It adopted a new constitution in 1992 with rights for the citizen, but there was no guarantor of its effective enforcement. Many of the constitutional provisions are under the legislature as well as president. The president has the power to dissolve the parliament, appoint the chairman of the Supreme Court and the heads of the Council of Ministers whom he appoints without parliamentary supervision. Appointed president for life in 1990, he died in December 2006. His authoritarian rule was also dotted with a sentries. From putting his revolving gold statue on a building so that the former would always face the sun to renaming the months of the year after his family, Saprat Najuk, from ordering a ban on public smoking after he himself had to stop smoking after his major heart surgery in 1997. The example of authoritarian rule in Asia are many. Thanan Kitty Gancham in Thailand, the Kim family in North Korea, Nogyo Den Demon, South Vietnam, Major General President Chunghi in South Korea, Ferdinand Marcus in Philippines, and Islam Kenimov in Uzbekistan. All these rulers brushed aside the will of the people and ruled arbitrarily. Presidential monarchy was another word coined in 1960 to describe the tendency and the third word personal dictators institutionalized their personal rule in the monarchical post of the president of the republic. They tell the people about the leader being a visionary or would quote the divine hand etc to retain power. Elections are promised but are postponed indefinitely till the society is peaceful and calm according to the dictator. The right conditions such just do not dawn an authoritarian regime according till the lead dictator dies in harness or is overthrown by another. In Latin America, Fidel Castro in Cuba has been in power since January 1, 1959. Thousands have been detained and an equally number has been tilled by firing squads. In Bolivia, the Nationalist Party, National Revolutionary Movement, has won election as far as December 1943. But the military do not let them succeed. August Pinochet in Chile suspended political activities in the country. People were killed or they just disappeared. The secret police, DINA, followed people, killing them, even other countries. Decent or protest were just not allowed. His caravans of death went from one town to the other, killing opponents and crushing his enemies. Political parties were not allowed to exit and elections were a farce. The story in the African continent too is similar with many countries ruled by authoritarian leaders or leaders. Africa got its independence from Pretoria regime after years of struggle. Their leaders, Nelson Mandela of the African National Congress, spent 27 years in prison in protest against the apartheid regime. The African, the native population was pushed into ghettos in which they lived in abject poverty with frequent break of life taking diseases. Egypt was ruled for 60 years by dictator, ruled by their own whims and fences. President Nasser whisked away his opponent through the secret policies. His successor Anwar Sadat stifled opposition everywhere, including the universities. 
for the decent to be suppressed in the universities, he passed the University Law of 1989. Anwar Sadat was succeeded by Hosni Mubarak, the later being tried presently. Hosni Mubarak imposed emergency law to detain anybody. Elections were a mere formality and police become brutal in using its power over dissents. Charles Taylor, the 22nd president of Libya, who ruled till 2003, denied basic rights to the people, using children below the age of 15 as child soldier. He committed atrocities on the population. Press was muzzled and journalists were beaten up. No criticism of Taylor was allowed on any platform. Equatorial Guinea president Mubasco believed in arbitrary rule. Repression of journalists, even foreigners, is a norm. Opposition does not exist, for it has been eliminated. Gaddafi of Libya is a dictator who ruled his country from 1969 to 2011 when he was overthrown. He made a public drama by hanging his opponent. His personal revolutionary guard crushed opposition. He publicly said that his opponent would be killed anywhere, even when they were in Mecca. His secret police followed his critique in different countries and assassinated them. He believed that his opponents needed to be beaten up and then practically followed his word. His youth militia keeps his opponent repressed. In the end, I will conclude that, that the world is open for democracy as a government, which means that for the people, by the people and to the people. But still, the world is open, has many pockets. If we say that in countries like Latin America, Asia, Africa, still this type of system exists. But we can also say, we can take the example of Hathi, where the elections were held, but still it is ruled by an authoritarian state. We can take an example of various other countries where still the authoritarian rule emerge, like we can take Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Sudan, etc. Thank you.